Welcome to St. John's for this our Christmas feast. Please stand and join in singing hymn number 83, O Come All Ye Faithful. The service of Holy Eucharist, right to, begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, my. 
be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it, with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in saying Psalm 96 in unison. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols but it is the Lord who made the heavens. O oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence! O oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary! Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. A reading from the letter of Paul to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all inequity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This shall be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words, and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Have you ever heard that before? Of course you have. We've heard it a hundred times. Maybe not quite like this, but a lot. It's an old story, it's a familiar story, and, and yet it's one that we're eager to, to go through hoops to hear again and again. Most years we come out in the middle of the night. This year we set up our iPads or our, our televisions. But it's so familiar, I don't think it's the story that makes us do this at all. I think there's more to it. It goes deeper. Now, all of us here know very well that the true meaning of Christmas isn't presents or, or shopping or Santa Claus or, or finding a good parking place, but it doesn't take a, a Christian to know that Christmas isn't about those things. Anybody who's ever seen The Grinch Who Stole Christmas can tell you that 
Christmas means a little bit more. The Grinch and any number of other holiday specials are full of really good moral teachings, peace on earth and goodwill and holding hands and singing together, but you know, I don't come out year after year in the middle of a cold winter night, get all dressed up in funny clothes and write a sermon or produce a video for just for peace and joy. Now don't get me wrong, peace and love and hope and joy and togetherness and all that, they're all great and, and wonderful things, but they're shared by almost everybody, Christian or, or Buddhist, Muslim, Jew, atheist, hippies. Peace and joy are pretty much universal values. I don't think it's choirs singing about love that, that brings us out on Christmas. You can get choirs singing about peace in Coke commercials. So maybe Christmas, thought the Grinch, means a little bit more. Maybe it's the baby. The birth of a baby is certainly enough to get someone out of bed in the middle of the night. I'm sure it got Joseph up. Mary probably never went to bed. It might have woken some stable animals, a few guests at the inn, but no matter what the song says, that the gift was not given silently. Mary was a good Jewish girl, not a Scientologist. But miracle though it be, a birth, a birthday, usually doesn't even rouse people in the next block, let alone people two millennia and half a world removed. I don't go to this much trouble for any other birthday, not for, for President's Day or Martin Luther King Jr. Day or, or even for my own birthday. There's something else. Maybe we go through all of this to remember God coming into the world. And that's absolutely an event worth celebrating and, and remembering, but you know, it still doesn't quite explain everything. You see, we don't have any special celebration of God's presence in the world at, at creation. We don't mark God's presence in the world as the still small voice heard by Elijah. We don't celebrate his presence before the Israelites in the wilderness, his presence at the wrestling match with Jacob, or any of the other numerous times that God came to be present with his children. God's always present in the world. So that's not quite it either. But through 2020, I've gotten an inkling of why we celebrate at Christmas, why we go through all of this, why we brave wind and, and snow and cold and ice and darkness and screens just to lift our voices in prayer and song. We celebrate because the waiting is finally over. When my kids were younger, they had a real struggle waiting for the big day, and the eagerness was sometimes too much for them. They would just quiver all over. They were eager for presents. They were eager for Christmas cards. They were eager to, to give presents to the family. They needed Christmas. They needed the celebration. Does anybody sympathize this year? I can't count how many times I've heard or said how much we need Christmas this year. But you know that, that need for a celebration, it's just a small part of what I mean today. I've been longing for snow. I do that every winter. Anybody else longing for snow? But you know, snow isn't just fun and games, is it? Anybody like to shovel snow? Anybody remember the last time you went out and, and shoveled? Do you remember your back breaking, your feet going numb in the cold, and you have ice crystals forming in your beard, and the thought of going inside and taking off all your wet things and, and drinking something hot in front of a fire makes you more than a little eager for the work to end, doesn't it? And that type of eagerness, that's part of it too. And you know, you don't even have to have shoveled snow to, to know that eagerness. We're all eager for something. This time of year, the nights are long and the days are short. And there are months of winter still in front of us. It may feel like it's been going on for a while, but winter only started a few days ago. 
We're waiting eagerly for, for flowers and for warmth and for longer days. We're waiting eagerly for the whole world around us to become brighter. We're here tonight because we've been waiting desperately for so, so long. We're waiting for that someday when things will get better. Someday it will be all right. Someday my ship will come in. Someday I'll be happy in my work. Someday I'll take that vacation. Someday my alcoholic father will turn his life around. Someday my child will come home. Someday the, the pain in my back will ease. Someday, someday the rich won't oppress the poor. Someday the blind will see. Someday the captives will be released. Someday broken hearts will be bound up. The longing and emptiness that we all feel, that's part of what it is to be a created being separate from God. We've been longing for someday like a deer pants for the water. We've been longing for someday more than watchmen for the morning. How long, O oh Lord, how long? And we gather tonight because someday is finally here. The yoke across our shoulders, the rod of our oppressor is broken. We aren't celebrating peace and love. We aren't remembering a birthday. We aren't noticing that God is wandering through his creation one more time. We're noticing, we're noticing that God has become one with creation. And that God is present, not just in, in peace and love and singing choirs, but is present in, in hunger in dirty swaddling clothes, in tears. God is present in, in skinned knees and growing pains and, and disappointment and disagreement. God is present even in, in oppression and suffering and emptiness and death. God is present in, in that infinite longing that we've had for so long. We go through all of this year after near year, Christmas after Christmas, because tonight the abyss of all our longings is filled by a baby in a stable. Today we can look into the empty places without fear and know that we will find Christ there looking back. Today, both heaven and nature are made whole and complete at last. Today, both earthly choirs and angels in heaven sing a new song. To us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The waiting is over. The kingdom of God is at hand. Glory to God in highest heaven. Amen.
cherubim and seraphim throng the air. But his mother only in her maiden bliss worship Please stand as we declare our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people for Christmas Eve. My sisters and brothers, in the peace of God, all the gifts that we shall give and receive in these days are but small tokens of the gift that shines forth in God's word made flesh this night. From grateful hearts, let us intercede for all who find themselves longing for this deepest, truest gift, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who lead and those who serve, that the peace proclaimed by angels in the shepherd's field might be realized on every field of war in every street of danger and violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and for refugees, that the child born to us might find in our hearts warm welcome by our openness to the needs of the homeless and the hungry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who sit in darkness, that in this time of gift giving, we might become more responsive to the abandoned the despairing, and the mourning. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the church, that the rejoicing of this day might be a bond leading us to true communion of life and worship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, especially those we now name, that the joy and consolation of the wonderful Counselor might enliven all who were struck down by disease and illness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially those we now name, that the blessed hope we celebrate this night might be the fulfillment of all who have gone before us in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray? God of darkness and silence, you have pierced the quiet of this night by the utterance of your word in our flesh. May our words of praise and petition be strong echoes of your Christmas word, so that all might come to the peace you promise in Jesus, who is Lord and God, this night and forever. Amen. Continuing on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Eucharistic Prayer B begins on page 367. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who, by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed John, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our, our salvation. By him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. 
Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Holy infant 
Continuing on page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May God, who in the Word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a very, very Merry Christmas. <laughs>